Calculus frightens lots of bright, talented students. I've seen the fear of calculus actually make students change their career choice. It shouldn't be like that. I'm Dr. Art Dimuk. I'm a retired college professor, not a mathematician, but a chemistry professor. Over the years, I have seen terrific students who make terrific grades in other subjects struggle with calculus. I hate to see that, and I want to help change that situation. I am not going to teach you any calculus, but I think I can give you a new perspective that will allow you to make calculus manageable, and perhaps actually enjoyable. Think for a moment back to grade school. We all started our study of math with arithmetic. I bet you remember learning how to count, how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. We memorized the rules and tables we needed to do those operations. Memorizing arithmetic rules and tables differed very little from the way we learned spelling or history. We practiced the multiplication tables, addition and subtraction over and over again. After arithmetic, we moved on to geometry, algebra, and trigonometry. In all of these things, we needed to memorize some things, but increasingly the ability to solve new problems required a slightly different skill set. For some, the different skill set came naturally, but for many good students, these subjects felt increasingly baffling. I'm going to call this second skill visual comprehension. We started off with the M skill for memorization, but to remain mathematically capable, a student has to switch increasingly to the V skill, the visual comprehension skill. I want to focus on the visualization skill and how you build that skill that you must have to master calculus. Let's go back to algebra for a moment. Algebra is the study of problems that have a particular number as their solution. If 3x equals 12, what is x? You perhaps once memorized a rule that says to solve 3x equals 12, you move the 3 to the other side of the equation and put it in the denominator. That works, but when you use that rule, you are using the M skill. Alternatively, an algebra student might visually understand an equation by seeing each side of the equation sitting on a beam balance, with each side weighing the same. The equal sign is perceived to mean that they weigh the same. To isolate the unknown x and solve the equation, one would simply do the same operation on each side of the equation so that the scale stays balanced. The student, using their V skill, would divide both sides of the equation by 3 to get the x by itself on the left side of the scale, and then x would equal 4. The V skill ultimately takes you further in math than the M skill. Wait a minute, you are probably thinking. How come no one ever talked to me before about this visualization skill? I think lots of people stumble onto it and never give it a name. Perhaps those students become mathematicians, physicists, and chemists, and never realize that they were thinking about these courses in a slightly different way. It turns out that Albert Einstein wrote an essay about how he created new insights in the field of physics. He did not start by writing mathematical equations as most people probably would guess. No, he thought about experiments that produced data that no one could explain. He would visualize a picture of what was happening, a picture in his mind that made sense of the surprising data. Only after he had a mental visual picture did he start to describe the process using mathematics. Why is this visual picture so important? Perhaps you can get some clue by appreciating the amount of your brain's cortex devoted to visual picture processing compared to other activities. Most experts believe that more than half of our brain cells process pictures. The smaller part of our brain cortex deals with all of the brain's many other tasks. If you think that some people were, are born with mathematical ability while others missed out, you might notice that many people believe the same situation describes artistic ability, our ability to draw. 
Artistic ability and calculus ability seem to have something in common. Let me explain. Over two decades ago, Dr. Betty Edwards created an approach to learning to draw that demonstrated that anyone can learn to draw using the correct approach. Dr. Edwards's book, entitled Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, has literally changed thousands of lives by giving people the right tools to allow them to draw. She proved that she essentially can teach anyone to draw, just as grade school teachers know that they can teach almost anyone to read. Betty Edwards found that people who feel that they cannot draw fail because they try to draw using the same mental process they use for language. They look at an object, give it a name, and then put on paper an icon for that name instead of drawing the actual shapes they have seen. Dr. Edwards found that using the wrong mental process can block your ability to draw. For calculus, memorizing equations blocks your math ability. Visualizing the process behind the math unlocks your math potential. From the first day of calculus and every day thereafter, focus on seeing the process. Sir Isaac Newton created calculus around 1687 by visualizing the process that moved the earth, the moon, and the planets about the heavens. He visualized the physical process and then created the mathematics. Algebra is the study of problems for which a number constitutes the solution. Calculus then goes beyond. Calculus is the study of problems for which a function constitutes the solution. A function is an equation that defines the relationship between one variable and another. Let me repeat that. For any number you give me, let's call that number t, a function will uniquely generate a new number we might call d. Now visualize a specific function. Visualize a function that tells me the distance of a car bumper from a starting line painted across a straight highway for every second that passes after the starting gun for a drag race. That's a function you can actually see. A mathematician might write that function using f to stand for the function as f of t equals d. We could draw a graph that shows the values of d for every t. The car that has the lowest t when the d equals the finish line wins the race. If you start your calculus course with such a vision of a function in your mind, you will soon learn in the class that you can derive the velocity function for your car by taking the first derivative with respect to time of the original position function. You might not recognize the term first derivative now, but you can understand that you will be learning in calculus how to go from position to velocity and then to acceleration, all terms that have meaning as you think about a car in a drag race. Later in your calculus course, you will learn how to start from the acceleration function and work backwards to the velocity and the position functions using the process of integration. In these few lines, I have given you a visual picture of the major concepts of calculus. If you get that visual picture, you have started your calculus journey well. But then, every day you study calculus, you must exercise your visualization skill. Don't just learn rules or processes, but insist that you create a visual picture or analogy of what you are working on each day in the course. If you cannot put that visual picture together for yourself, ask your instructor to help you with it. When you have the visual picture, you understand calculus. Without the visual picture, you may struggle to solve new problems. Without the visual picture, calculus will not come alive for you. I wish you great success. And if you should find calculus interesting, I am positive that you will love chemistry. But that's another story.